Pi there. You have probably seen this video on YouTube titled Study Less, Study Smart by Professor Marty Lobdell. In his video, he shared various tips and tricks you can use in your study, such as breaking up your study sessions, active learning, mnemonics, and many more. In this video, we'll be building up on this. We'll be incorporating Professor Lobdell's tricks while adding some bits of advice from Ali Abdal, Hamza Ahmed, Josh Chen, Dr. Andrew Uberman, Thomas Frank, and of course, me, one Pi Man. Oh, I, I mean the Pi Man. Together, we'll devise a system on how to study math effectively and efficiently. This is Thomas Frank, the CEO of College Info Geek. In his book, 10 Steps to Earning Awesome Greed While Studying Less, he shared a pretty nice study equation. In this equation, desired preparedness is fixed since this would immediately be high if we aim for a high grade. If you decide to attend all or most of your classes, then class time will also be fixed. So the only variables that we can really deal with are learning quality and study efficiency. Primarily, we focus on efficiency for this one. Basic math tells us that to decrease study time, we need to increase study efficiency. To do this, we'll be going over four phases which mimics our typical study session. The essentials or the fundamental stuff to consider outside our study sessions the pre-study session or the things that we should do right before we enter a study session, the study session or the things that we should be doing during the learning bout, and the post-study session or the things that we should do after the learning bout. So without further ado, let us start. The most important thing that you could do instantly to improve your grade in math or in any subject, is to put your health as number one. According to Thomas Frank, it is important that you don't overload the system, which is basically your body, as all your hard work and effort would be wasted if you skip this piece of the puzzle. So just make sure to eat healthy, exercise daily, hydrate properly, and sleep sufficiently every single day. Next, let's talk about the optimal time to study in a day. According to Dr. Andrew Huberman, a well-known neuroscientist, the ideal time for studying is during the first 9 hours after you wake up since during this time, we experience high level of alertness compared to other times of the day. Hamza, a famous YouTuber, supported this fact by introducing the concepts of brain points, which basically means that our brain power is only limited and this gets diminished throughout the day, as well as the idea of eating the frog or doing the hardest task first thing in the morning as this will help set you up for the whole day. Combining these two supports the fact that morning is indeed the best time to study for most, if not all, students. Having the right study environment helps prime your brain into work mode. Here are some things that you can do to make your environment more conducive to learning. First, build your optimal study area. According to Professor Marty Lobdell, if you have two tables, it is important to designate one for work and the other for non-work or leisure. Aside from this, you probably do your schoolwork in your bedroom. Although this isn't ideal, a remedy to this is to position your work area away from your bed. 
Dr. Andrew Uberman also has some nice insights regarding this. If you have a computer or laptop, try positioning this at nose to eye level as this was found to help with your alertness. Moreover, if you can, try working under a low ceiling as this could also help with detailed work that requires focus such as math. Next, try to remove any distractions. This includes saying no to the people around you as well as turning off your notifications or putting your phone and gadgets in do not disturb mode. Third, prepare your tools such as your study guide, list of exercises, textbook, etc. Last thing to consider in our environment is the study music. For this one, try to experiment with what works for you as music is kind of a personal thing. But here are some insights. Professor Marty Lobdell believes that study music shouldn't contain any form of vocals as this could distract you from learning. Thomas Frank supports this and suggests that we should listen to music that are 99% instrument. He actually has a nice study music playlist which I would link in the description down below. If you prefer silence or slight silence, Dr. Andrew Uberman said that it was found in multiple studies that listening to 40 hertz pure, and I repeat, pure binaural beats 30 minutes before or during your learning bout positively impacts your focus. Dr. Andrew Uberman suggests that before we start our study session, we first need to consider two things to maximize everything we are about to learn. First is to get alert. Do 10 to 15 inhales followed by a short and passive exhale. It would look something like this. Second is to get focused. Set your timer to 15 to 60 seconds. Try to focus at a small point or object on your screen or near it. Doing these steps activates your nervous system to make the most out of what you are about to learn. Let's first talk about how long should your study session last. Here are three ways on how you can break up your study sessions for maximum efficiency. The Pomodoro, the Anime Doro, and the Old Trajan Doro. Let's go over these one by one. First is the Pomodoro Technique. Research shows that the average time before you lose your attention span in study sessions is about 25 to 30 minutes. Although this seems short, the good part here is that it only takes 5 minutes to recharge from this. You may take a nap or walk during this 5 minutes. Upon completing all the study sessions, give yourself a treat for around 30 minutes. Play your favorite game, watch your favorite series, and so on. And that is basically the Pomodoro technique. The problem though with Pomodoro is that 25 to 30 minutes isn't really enough time to study math. Moreover, the rest break isn't really that rewarding in my opinion. That's where Anime Doro comes in. This is a method created by the YouTuber Josh Chen, which is a combination of 40 to 60 minutes of work followed by a rest of around 19 minutes of watching anime, excluding the intro and the outro. This method addresses the concerns in Pomodoro, specifically not having enough study time and a rewarding break time. Although this method seems more inefficient, this can actually be more effective than Pomodoro. Indeed, let's look at their work-to-break ratio. If we do the math, traditional Pomodoro has a 2.86 minutes of work per 1 minute break, while Anime Doro has around 2-3 minutes of work per 1 minute break. So if you are an anime fan, try this out for yourself and see what happens. Now if you take higher level math classes, an hour is still not enough time to fully grasp a concept. To solve this, we have the Ultrajan Doro. Based on our Ultrajan rhythm, we maximize our learning through 90 minute study sessions as this follows our natural biological cycle. Anything more than this would be inefficient for maximum productivity and focus. These should be split throughout the day for a minimum of 20 minute breaks. Also, these sessions should only be limited to 3 to 4 times a day. So given this restriction, it is very important that we make the most out of these. How? 
The answer lies in active learning. To understand this better, let's first try to differentiate active from passive learning. When you apply, create, and teach, that is active learning. When you observe, read, and listen, that is passive learning. Between these two, active learning is more superior as it requires more use of your brain. To apply this, we first determine what we are about to learn. Is it a fact or a concept? A fact is something that you can easily look up online. In math, these are usually formulas, identities, theorems, etc. These are the things that you just really need to remember for your exams. A concept, on the other hand, is an abstract idea of how things work. In math, this usually lies in deriving an equation, proving a theorem, or answering an example. These are the things that you must know and understand by heart. The nice thing about math is that it has more concepts than facts. I don't know if that's a good thing, but for me it is. If you forget something, you can easily derive it if you fully understand the concept or concepts behind it. Now that we know what we are about to learn, Ali Abdel, the author of Feel Good Productivity, talks about two key steps in learning. Understanding, then remembering. Note that understanding should always come before, I repeat, before remembering. So how do we test understanding? In math, the trick to understanding a concept is to be able to explain it to a five-year-old by putting it in your own simple words. Let us use the squeeze theorem as an example. How would you explain this to a five-year-old? For me, I would use sandwiches. I won't go over the details, but I think you get my point. Squeeze theorem, sandwiches, both related. The key here is that you don't need to worry about getting all the details 100% accurate. The important thing here is that you can level down the difficulty of the concept to the point that a five-year-old could even understand it. Aside from this, you can also test understanding by quizzing yourself or answering math exercises. Let's say you know the integration by parts formula. Now let's say you have these practice problems. Being able to answer all of these would be a great test if you truly understand how IBP works. If you can't do these, that means that there is some gaps in your understanding and you need to revisit the concept or try the exercise again and again and again. Now, after understanding a concept, the next thing to do is to remember it. To deal with this, we first talk about the forgetting curve by Hermann Ebbinghaus. This curve shows how we forget certain information over time if we do not attempt to retain it. To combat this, we use the magic of spaced repetition. Spaced repetition is a study method wherein we review certain information just as we are about to forget it. How do we do this? The easiest way is to use online flashcards, specifically Anki. How do you use this? I suggest that you check out this video by the MD Journey titled How to Use Anki Like a Pro, as well as my video titled How to Memorize Math Formulas Quickly to learn how I use it specifically for math. And just some additional tips, don't put facts or concepts that you already know by heart, like cosine pi is equal to negative 1. Don't overload one card with too much information, like what are the four conic sections and their equations, both horizontal and vertical. That's too much information in one card. Be selective. If you don't think it's needed, then don't put it. Like, enumerate the trigonometric functions. I am 100% sure this won't be asked in a math exam. Personally, using flashcards in math has been a game changer for me. Using this helped me improve my exam scores, understand discussions better, remember various theorems, formulas, and ultimately, study efficiently in the short amount of time. Now that we know how to study math, the next step is to put the reps in. Two things can happen when we do the work over and over again. Either we reinforce previous learnings or we make errors. Although it is natural to get frustrated, Dr. Andrew Huberman tells us that we shouldn't be disappointed whenever we get stuck and make errors. It is in these mistakes and failures that we learn something new and our brain adapts. It is important to have a positive mindset whenever we make errors or mistakes. After a study session, Dr. Andrew Huberman tells us that it is important to get deep rest as it is during these states that our brain consolidates and speeds up the learning process by strengthening its connection. 
I won't go over the minor details regarding this, but if you want, here are two videos that you can watch. First, you may watch hashtag NSDR with Dr. Andrew Huberman to understand how you can use your mind to achieve deep rest states for just 10 minutes. And second, you may watch this video titled 2 Minute Summary of Perfecting Your Sleep by Andrew Huberman. You may check the links to these in the description down below. To summarize, this is how your study session should now look like. Ideally, you would want to place your study sessions in the morning for the increased alertness and brain capacity. Before you start, make sure that your environment is set up perfectly to prime your brain for learning. Use the focus and alertness tools mentioned in the video to maximize what you are about to learn. Apply active recall during your study sessions by answering exercises and using flashcards. And at the end of your learning, make sure to rest to consolidate everything you have just learned. Studying for a math exam is hard, but it doesn't mean that it should be 16 hours of pain and misery. Studying can also be short and fun if you have the right tools and mindset on how to attack. I used to think that top students outperform others by devoting more and more time to studying. It turns out that the top students just know how to play the game the right way. It is all about studying smart while studying less.